Thank you, Asher. And uh, as Asher said, uh, well, I would like to give uh, a very quick presentation of uh, what uh, big data is all about. But I think uh, many of you know that uh, big data, one of the things that uh, big data offers uh, to us is a, a graphical representation of a various situation. This one was taken from BITS. It's a visual presentation of recent sentiment as expressed on the internet. Good feelings are brighter, negative ones are darker, and uh, a, lot, a lot of good feelings. Um, we know, we personally know something about uh, big data from our um, uh, interface to companies such as uh, Google, Facebook, Amazon and others, uh, but we're seeing uh, big data put into work in a lot of other organizations. Um, for a long time we've seen uh, big data developing in everything concerning uh, business uh, information, and now we're seeing more and more uh, bodies which rely more on analysis of big data rather than on making intuitive decisions in a range of uh, topics, uh, sciences and social sciences, public health and sport, energy, medicine, financials, communications, and many more. And we will see a couple of examples uh, in the startup session that, uh, that will follow the two main lectures. Our first uh, speaker today, as Asher mentioned, is Dr. Ahad Barzilai, Technology Management and Information Systems at the Rekanati Business School, Tel Aviv University. Ahad, will you take it from here? Thank you very much for the kind uh, introduction. So uh, my name is Ohad. Uh, I teach um, information systems and technology management uh, from a business perspective using both technology and uh, insights of making money. This is a, a very nice uh, insight and I will take you through some orientation uh, tour of uh, big data and what does this big data mean because when we say big data, everybody means something else. It's like this uh, uh, story about the, the blind man and the elephant, that one uh, blind man uh, say it's a spear, and one is a fan, and one is a snake. So, and they, they all have a point, because they all have a, a certain perspective on this elephant, and they describe what they see. It's kind of the same thing with uh, big data and the big data buzz because there is some buzz about it. And uh, let's start with some uh, motivations why, why we call it big data. First, because there is lots of data. And um, the data out there can be derived from many domains and many uh, uh, fields like, I don't know, geology, space, the human body, all of these verticals have lots of data in them, the human genome, uh, listening to signals in space, uh, some analysis of constellations of stars, um, all these meters that, the, the, that uh, are measuring the, the Earth's move and uh, trying to predict earthquakes. These generate lots and lots of data that we are only now able to manipulate uh, in, a, in large scale. Second source of, uh, of big data is, of course, our digital, our digital life. Many uh, actions that we do now are digitized and are stored in some database. What we uh, buy, what we do, because we have a cell phone, so uh, the cell phone tracks our uh, location on any, on, on every minute. Uh, the internet uh, by itself, think about, I don't know, web traffic, every website has thousands of visitors every milliseconds and needs to decide what to present them because our websites are now tailored for every one of us. We, we, uh, we see different commercials, different ads, different flavors of uh, designs based on our identity, and someone needs to organize this data behind the scenes. Social networks are uh, a huge source of uh, data because now not only 
websites create content uh, on the internet, but also people. And we, we tweet about it and we post uh, about it on Facebook. And now there is a way to collect all this data and make sense out of it. And this poses a, a, a huge challenge of, of, on, on how we do it and, uh, and how we do it and what are we going to do with this, uh, with data. This data is very diverse. It, it, it's common to speak about the three Vs of uh, big data because it has a huge volume. It comes in a, in, in, in a fast velocity. It's very, very fast and, and it's transient. Uh, and it's not structured in any way, for example, our tweets or our Facebook posts. They have many forms and we cannot easily make sense out of them. It takes some, some effort. So the first source of the, of the big data phenomena lies in this, this amount of data. It's, it's lots of data out there. And we try to address this issue by building an uh, enterprise information system that would be able to store all this data, to process all this data, to communicate it uh, back and forth around Earth on Internet scale. Uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, transactions on each uh, router every second. It's, it's a huge amount. Um, we need new paradigms if we want to uh, do it on our organization, if we are building a startup that uh, wants to provide some service to some uh, users. If we are not successful, it's no problem. But if you are successful, we can. Um, we are facing um, some great challenges uh, all of a sudden. We are not prepared to and we need to be able to, uh, to store all, all, all our data, to process it, to communicate it. And some of these uh, challenges has create, have created uh, the cloud uh, movement, distributed computing, NoSQL uh, paradigms. Um, and they are all building blocks that are uh, out there waiting for someone to do something with them. Um, data is not enough. We take the data and make, um, may transform it into information and then knowledge. And there are lots of uh, existing methods, theoretical methods to do it. Uh, data mining, machine learning, statistics, and econometrics are all methods that are being uh, studied in the universities for, for a few years now. And they're all again, may serve as building blocks for the big data uh, movement. And McKinsey report from uh, 2011 says that by 2018, the United States alone could face a shortage of 140,000 to 190,000 people with deep analytical skills, which means that we should learn this stuff not only for the university and not only for, for our graduation exams, but also to use it on real life, on startups, on big companies, as part of our uh, daily jobs. Knowledge is not enough because big data is uh, the main incentive of big data is making good decision, good business decisions. Uh, we have the infrastructure, we have the methods. Now we need to make decisions that would create value and create money, bring money to our organization and our business. And there are lots of uh, verticals in which this, uh, um, in which this approach uh, 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 is already known to be uh, profitable finance, government, government, telecom, manufacturing, energy, and healthcare. But you probably ask yourself, well, I'm not in, in any of these verticals. Why are you talking about big data? To me, I'm, I'm, I'm a startup that is creating gains. Is this um, relevant also to me? Yes, it is. And again, uh, to the McKinsey report, uh, not only 140 
to 190,000 uh, workers of big data are, are needed, but also about one and a half million managers that would be able to make um, data-driven decisions. And uh, these decisions uh, go beyond these uh, verticals. They apply for many other organizations, such as uh, sentiment analysis. I would like to know what people are saying about my brand on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, churn mitigation, if I am running an, a company and, and, and I have subscription model and people, I want to predict which people are likely to uh, leave me in, uh, at, at the end of the next term because I would like to uh, offer these uh, people some kind of uh, discount on their uh, package and maybe convince them to, to stay. So uh, there are lots of horizontal use cases that would be applicable to many of the organizations and the business in our uh, modern world. I would like to think about big data as a stack. At the bottom of the stack is the infrastructure, is the infrastructure, is how I take the real world event and digitize them, put them into my system, make them uh, records in my database, and, and, uh, and above it, the data organization and management, how do I process these, uh, these bits, because there are not only thousands and tens of thousands of, of records, it's uh, hundreds of millions and, and, and billions of uh, records. Think about, I don't know, Facebook, which has one billion uh, users and need to make a select on their database. They want to go over the database and find all users which have a certain property. This is a very uh, challenging task to a, a regular uh, company. If you are not Facebook, you say, well, okay, okay, so I'm screwed. What can I do? Above this layer, this the analytics and discovery, it's the, 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 the scientific method, the data mining, the, the machine learning, the econometrics method, how to make sense of this uh, data. And on the top, uh, on top of it is making the business decision decide what to do based on uh, the result I, uh, I found. But taking this perspective of a, of a stack is not just a, a, a tool. This is the essence of big data. Uh, in my perspective, all the components are already there. There is the cloud and there is the, the, the social networks and, and, and the machine learning. Everything is in place. But now taking a perspective of a, of a full stack driven by a business decision and, and ending in, a, in, some, in, in, in value creating for organizations and businesses is the, is the heart of, of big data. It's a scientific mindset. I start uh, with a hypothesis. I do not start with listening to my data, gazing the data, because there are patterns there. But if you just look at it and wait for something to come up, you know, in the 90s, the, these images were very, very popular. In this particular image, I couldn't see any pattern for about four or five years. In order to, to, uh, to see the pattern, you should not just gaze in this uh, photo. You should start by asking a question. Start by formulate hypothesis like a, a scientist. I expect that X is correlated with Y. I want to, to, to know what is going to be the next uh, action of a user of a certain type. After I formulate my, my hypothesis, I can capture the phenomena correctly, measure relevant uh, data, process it, analyze it correctly, and find correlation, infer causality, and in the end, make decisions. So, big data is, is, is just about it. It's about, mm, well, because I'm, I work in the university, I, 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 I like the way I work, and I think that managers should, should adopt some of our characteristics 
of asking the right questions, measuring the right um, metrics, and doing the right thing. I, I would like to, uh, to give you two examples uh, in order to uh, uh, prove in, by example what I mean. And this, uh, this is a story uh, from 10 years ago um, about Hurricane Francis. Uh, in the southern uh, of, of the U.S., there is a, 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 every year there's a season of hurricanes, and uh, Walmart wanted to be prepared for the next hurricane, for Hurricane Francis. So the head of the information system in uh, Walmart was asked to find what do people buy in a hurricane. Only a few weeks ago, there was a Hurricane Charlie, at the same area, so it should have been a, a kind of simple uh, task. Let's see what happened only a few weeks ago. But from a, a, um, an information system perspective, it's quite challenging because products that were, that were uh, sold at this time, maybe we're sold because of uh, some seasonal hype. I need to clean the stores within the hurricane, uh, um, um, w w within the, 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 the hurricane hit and outside of it. I, I, I need to, to do all, all kind of uh, measuring in order to clean the data and measure the right things. At first, Walmart thought, well, it's going to be a nice, uh, a, a nice exercise, but we know what people buy in Horican. What people buy? Water, Water. Batteries. batteries. So you are, all, you are all right, but in Horican, people buy seven times as much as strawberry Pop-Tart and beer. So you could not have anticipated these products, even if you are a very talented manager. You know your clients, but in large organization, huge organization, nationwide organization like Walmart, the, the insights are being lost. They are distributed across the organization, across the employees, across the country. There is no single point which have the, the real overview of, uh, of, 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 of all Walmart. And in addition, in such a large scale, if I find some increase of one, two, three percent in the sale of something, it may have a huge impact, but not uh, so visible in such a large organization. The, the last uh, example I would uh, like to, to show you is a, an Israeli startup called SportView. SportView uh, has a player tracking technology and it tracks basketball and football players in real time. I would like to take you through the, uh, the stack very shortly and, 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 and give you a taste of how the, the stack looks like in a startup. So Sportview started in the infrastructure layer. They put cameras, six cameras, on every basketball court, court and track all the players. They know which player was on every spot every 40 milliseconds, 25 times each second. After doing that, they create a huge XML file. You cannot uh, read it, but on every line there is uh, uh, 10 players. For each player, the coordinates, the X, Y, and Z of the player, with addition to the ball and the three referees of the game. But this not, does not end here, because now they're putting all these records together and create some insights out of these uh, images. For example, in, uh, in, in, in this uh, row you can see that, uh, I don't know, in uh, seven, after 56 uh, milli, um, milliseconds, uh, there was an event number 23, which is a possession of some 
uh, player, you can see that these two events are correlated by a number, I don't know, four, which means that this one was uh, an assist and this one was a shot. So once, once a player uh, shot a, a ball and scores, you need to, uh, uh, to mark an assist to the player that was giving him this, uh, this ball. On the, on the top level of this stack, there are lots of nice and cool applications. The first one is uh, what I call Moneyball on steroids. Uh, the Moneyball is, is a movie about a, a, a baseball uh, coach that was able to build a team with a quarter of the amount of its previous team and reach the same uh, results, the semifinal, I think, only by looking at statistics, not about players only at statistics. So this is what actually uh, SportsView is doing. Another application is live tweeting. The application can tweet live automatically what happens in the game on real time. LeBron James with a bad pass turnover. This was a, or Brandon Bass makes a driving slam dunk shot from one foot out. Paul Pierce with the assist. So, this software has an intelligence of knowing what happens only by augmenting, collecting all this big data, all these 40 milliseconds uh, shots. Uh, sport medicine, you know that uh, a player that is being injured in the middle of the season costs lots of money to the team that acquired this, uh, this player, but if I can track every movement that this player is doing, I can predict more uh, accurately what is the uh, uh, amount of effort on uh, his muscles. And this is very, um, this worth lots of money to lots of, uh, of uh, teams. So this was my uh, uh, two cents about uh, Bilia. Thank you very much. This is a bottle of wine by Gulan Wine.